Welcome back to the vlog. Come with us to the Grizz playoff game. There's a oh. building that wasn't there before. Dude, that's kind of dope. It looks kind of neat. It's, yeah, it's going to be kind of cool. This archway thing is kind of cool. Grizzly gateway. I know that looks like a wild weenie, but I can guarantee my weenie is wilder. You didn't know we had a wiener dog? Oh, I forgot. That's supposed to be Megan's <laughs> Christmas present. No, that's your Oh my god, if you give me a weenie dog, we're getting divorced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I mean, it's hidden. Even SpongeBob picks Montana. I'm gonna have to fill this in. Uh, this is the only televised game this round of the FCS playoffs, and it's gonna be on ESPN too. But no other game is televised. But we're gonna get that. And you know, obviously, they're on the channel. We're here. We have way better seats. Last time we were up there. Well, no, it's not as really better. Just like that elevates more. Oh yeah. We're like right on the field. I'm not zoomed at all. The pylons say Grizz. That's actually a little bit surprising because like when the COVID thing was like pretty hardcore, there was a shortage on those pylons. There was a big article in Sports Illustrated about that. That there were like 14 left in the entire country. <laughs> From this angle, we can't see what it is. I don't think this was a shot in the street. I'm excited to drink my water. Now I got water. I mean, I don't think it'll stay, but I like the boy. You know, you're not from California anymore, Megan. I just know I'm not. I just don't want to talk to people. No, that's what, I hope it stays back like this. Then it's like it's said to be. Because first off, the bench is full. Oh, that's kind of cool. See how the formation make it works on the other side? Yeah. That's kind of an intense switch. It's kind of funny how the helmets are. Yeah. Oh, Megan, check this out. That's the goal, man. In front of it. Give me a G. G. Give me an R. R. Now give me an I. I. Now give me that Z. Z. So what's that spell? Chris. Oh, God, I can't hear you. What's that spell? Chris. And those guys who are always here and always naked. The whole band's in like trench coats with the top row of girls basically just out there in a hey, skirt. And a Santa hat. Basically, yeah. There's the sign, Megan. We're right by the SpongeBob sign. Hat. That's any as you call it, which is who we'd get next if this goes well. Pickoff goes into the end zone.
What was that? Oh, if you find a snowball. With the crunches, he's just Ooh. jumping up, running with crunches. Good for another. Two First down, Montana. First and ten at the 34 yard line. Montana. First and ten, Red Hawks 32 yard line. Mitch is in single coverage. Get it, Mitch. Come on! Yes! What did I say? Oh, there we go! There we go! Holy shit, you don't realize how high they get when you're like off over there. Because you think about it, when we're like when you're there, you don't realize how high they get when you're like here, they get that like high level. Oh, right, right, right. And the extra point is good. Okay, so the, when the Grizz get a touchdown, they throw Twinkies and Ding Dongs and shit. And the announcer said, please use caution when dishing your Ding Dongs. We've actually caught a Twinkie, by the way. <laughs> that block, too, that block that sprung him, oh my <laughs> god. He laid him out. Right. Holy Back to the beginning of the game. Oh, oh. Where, where is it? Where is this ball there? 24. They're doing flippity floppities. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, the ESPN guy. <laughs> trying to get the sign. The ESPN's playoffs. And their diligent work to create a safe environment for the fans and players. Thank you. Man, show the ESPN guy. Oh, once they're done. Yeah, that's weird, because his hat says ESPN on there. They've got a specific one there. Oh, look at them over there trying to get hyped. Oh, look, they're trying to get their shit together. They're just wasting energy is what they're doing. Good. Waste all your energy. Do it. Keep going. I mean, I guess they are from the south enough that they're probably cold. That's true. Some of them with fucking blankets on. Okay. Or ponchos or something. Oh, Josh, 
Out there in Louisiana in the playoffs a few years ago, Randy Moss, like NFL Randy Moss, his single play game playoff record yardage fell. Yeah. To a grid. That was a big player. guy, yeah. Woo! So yeah, I was like, I think I can get my hands on it. If I'd have known four strike could get my hands on it, I would have gotten both hands out better. Oh, man. I basically only put one in. 
hand out, so I'm like, I ain't even gonna get close. You touched it. I heard you. Oh, touch I know. It. it got my hand in the air. But I was like, I'm like, there's no way as I put my hand out. If I'd have thought it was gonna come to me, I don't know. Because I kind of threw the second one up kind of last second. Poor Shima. I mean, their name's almost Shima. Shima's cool. <laughs> But, and then they're also not a rival. They would have beat us like that, but now I'm not going to pull guys. Oh, who took the pylon on that? Are you serious? That first half was terrible. Oh, so stressful. This game yeah, is stressful. Yeah, we play like that for even... I know. So, some final thoughts on the game, since we didn't really vlog on the way home. Because, I mean, in a dark car, it kind of sucks anyway. Yeah, it almost got really interesting, because Lucas Johnson was playing pretty poorly, and... He's from originally from California. He actually transferred from San Diego State before the season. So, yeah, I was like, I'm like, of course a Californian, like, having to play in the cold is going to be the thing that screws us out of winning this playoff game. And then, even once we started getting back in it, we had the kick return for a touchdown after they got it to 24-3, where it was like, oh, God, this is basically over, like, right at the beginning of the second half. And then we got that kick return touchdown. And then it was like, like okay, cool, we're getting back in the game. And I think it was still tied at that point. I don't remember, but he threw a, or we were only up by three, and he threw a pick in the end zone. And it wasn't a bad pick. Like, honestly, the, the defender had to work for it. it was, they made a really good catch. But it was just like, the, like, until we got that final touchdown to make it a 10 point game, and then, like, the way we've been stopping them there for a while, I was like, okay, that's like, feels safe now. But it was like, oh my God, this Californian's going to screw us out of this. It's like, you can't play in the cold. I mean, not that it was that cold, but. But yeah, there for a bit during that game, it was like, this is not a good deal. And also, I don't think, I wish Megan would have been videoing, but she would have just had to arbitrarily, well, I don't know, she was kind of videoing every time the Grizz were down in the red zone. But it was kind of funny, because I, all oh, there was a pass that was thrown out of bounds, and it was like right to the front of the stands. Like, so it was like basically right in front of us. And I, uh, I reached, like, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to even get close. And I kind of leaned forward and reached out with one hand. And then once it hit my hand, I'm like, damn it. If I, like, and I think I kind of threw him. I'm going to have to hold, if it was on, I'll have to watch it in the DVR and see if actually, because sometimes when they throw it out of bounds, the camera doesn't follow that great. But I kind of think like, as it hit my hand, I'm like, oh crap, I actually could have. And I tried to get my other hand up, but it was kind of funny because the guy behind me was like, he's like, nice try. He's like, that would have been a great catch. You probably would have ended up on ESPN's top 10. And I was like, I'm like, yeah, but I think I'm going to have to flip over the rail. And he's like, oh, you really would have then. But I honestly think, like, if I would have known I was going to be able to get my hands on it and I could have gotten both hands out, I could have caught it. But it's kind of insane how freaking cold 
it's kind of funny though too it's like it shows how much like athletic instinct i still have because a ball is just like arbitrarily thrown in my direction and i'm like gotta try to get it <laughs> like it's like you're in the stands i don't care i gotta try to get it but it's like yeah it is kind of funny because like especially with like kicking like when you talk about like the because that was like when the southeastern missouri missed their missed that one field goal and they were they're at the 31 on their way in so like with the snap and everything it was like a 46 yarder and it's like it just it like i mean it was wide anyway and it like it kind of like we were like pretty level with the goal post but it did look like it would have been short too but it's like yeah like even when like that i almost caught that ball it's kind of insane like I, I think people that like don't play in cold weather like underestimate that fact but like how insanely hard those balls get in the cold it's crazy because like pat mcafee talks about it quite a bit like anytime he's talking about like kicking and stuff like that because he's a proponent of domes because he's a punter and it's like dude the elements are part of the game and like if your team's good you shouldn't be doing much but but yeah it was, it was just kind of it was kind of funny that was it was interesting because i was like like if there were people around us like bench him like yelling about lucas johnson i mean it did take a he had a touchdown in between but it did take a punt and kick return to get us back in the game basically because i mean it's like if we didn't have them it's like yeah we ended up winning by 10 but you take 14 points out of there lose by four and that's one thing that's kind of interesting about that football game too is because you know a lot of the ones we go to because it's like you know, some of the like ran other random FCS teams that we play like before conference play starts. We like this that year was actually the first time we went to one of them because of uh, we wanted to go to the opener for once. But normally we go to late season games, which means it's conference play like Cat Grizz and stuff like that. And then last year, a conference rival happens to be the team we played in the playoffs when Mouthy Lemu Jones, that piece of garbage, I don't remember his first name. Yeah, it's hyphenated name. Who, like, was... Because we got... Uh, we were uh, seated, so we had a bye. And he was like, oh, they don't deserve a seat and blah, blah. And then, like, when the rest of the bracket was being unveiled, and I was like, oh, no. Like, we're going to end up having to play Eastern Washington, which I was very worried about. But they ended up coming in to Missoula, and we ended up thumping them bad. And it was like, oh, yeah, we didn't deserve a seed, huh? And, like, him and their quarterback graduated, so they fell apart this year. And it was just, like, such karma because it was, like, it's, like, we thumped the Bobcats, the in-state rival, who, like, they had, like, we, I mean, I don't know if that's what it was, but, like, right after that game is when their quarterback, who, like, was doing awesome, bailed and went to the transfer portal, and that's what opened things up for the Butte kid, Malat, which is basically, like, 90% of what the Cats have going for them now. I mean, their defense is good, pretty good. But it's like, if they were, like, you know, if Malat wasn't putting up the points so that the other teams can kind of play more ball, like, ball control, they might not be so great. Because he, he, like, went off on a big, like, oh, they don't deserve a seed. And then came here and, like, he ended up with some yards, but a lot of them were in garbage time. Like, we fairly well shut him down considering how, what kind of numbers he put up. Because that's even, like, this game. Like, yeah, their running back got two touchdowns and 122 yards but like the week before he ran for over 300 so it's like and he was like their big dude like and I think like he's he's in like FCS like player of the year running so it's like yeah like to hold him to that was actually pretty good but yeah just because of like because then like when we lit up southeastern Louisiana because I don't know because there was music playing so we might not be able to put it in the video but during that game our receiver Torre broke Randy Moss, like the Randy Moss, like of NFL Hall of Fame Randy Moss. They broke his FCS single game playoff yardage record for receiving. And we lit them up. It was like 73 to 6. It was nuts. I don't even remember exactly what it was, but we just ripped them in half. Yeah, but like uh, like I was saying, like most of you go to like late game when it's like, oh, this is for playoff implications. Like one of the first ones in which it was like a really tight game with Weaver State. And then like we went to Cagres last year. But it's like, for the most part, we don't see those like random uh, out of conference teams. And it was like, I kind of felt bad because this was like with Southeastern Missouri. And then, you know, I guess, I don't know. It's amazing how many people don't know the state abbreviations, but Missouri is MO. So it's like just S-E-M-O, C-M-O. And I was like, 
with my love of cars, I'm like, uh, I'm like, I feel bad beating them because they're clo so close to SEMO or SEMA, SEMO, SEMA. I'm like, and SEMA is such a great organization. And like, they're gonna help keep the non-garbage electric cars alive. I mean, I don't know, if people do some cool innovative stuff with electric cars, they'll accept that too, but they're not gonna allow everyone to roll over and let cool, uh, the awesome gas powered cars that they've been based around die. But but yeah, it's just kind of interesting because it's like, they're not a conference team. It's the first time they've ever played the Grizz. And it's just like, it's kind of, it's such a weird feeling because it's like when we like thump Eastern Washington, it's like, yeah, good, ha! Ah! Like, we, like a group of like 80 of us waited by the tunnel, like where they had to go to their bus to be like, hey, Lemu, like, did we, did, how, did we not deserve a seed? We beat you by like 30 points. I don't remember what it exactly actually was, but it was like, it's like, yeah, we, like we didn't deserve a seed, huh? Like, did. and I mean, you know, I guess if somebody, cause that's like this, this team we just played, they were nine and two and we were seven and four, but like we got beat by the number two. Cause like there was a guy on the selection show that was like, oh, how do you finish fifth in your conference and still get in? Like we need to have more conference diversity. It's like, well, we just beat the, like, I mean, yeah, the first half was bad, but once we, like, if if we wouldn't have, like, played so bad in the first half, if, like, the first and second half would have been the same, we would have beat them by, like, 30. We ended up beating them by 10 when they had a 24-3 lead with eight minutes left in the third or, rough, like, whatever it was. It was about that. But, yeah, because he's like, oh, how do they deserve to be in? Well, of the teams we, like, the teams that were above us in the conference, three of them are the teams we lost to. One of them is the number two seed in the tournament. Another one is the number four seed in the tournament. The one that's the two seed cheap shot at our quarterback in the second quarter, and we played without him and still lost in overtime. And then because of that cheap shot, we didn't have him in the next game. Or no, wait, all four. All four of the ones above us in the conference are the ones that beat us. Because then we didn't have him in the next game, and that team beat us by three and are also in the in the tournament. And then, like, one of the other at-large bids that, because let's see, because two of them had a bye, and Weber State won. Idaho lost 42-45 to 45 to Southeastern Louisiana State. But, yeah, it's like every one of those teams that was ahead of us, except for Idaho barely getting beat, is, like, either had a bye or moved on. And it was like we lost, barely lost one of them to a team that was easily in without our starting quarterback and then barely lost to the number two seed with our starting quarterback gone for over half the game and then the number four seed like yeah they just ran us out of the building and then we did have like a pretty sloppy game against the the against idaho but it's like yeah it's like yeah we could because like there was a team that lo like literally lost the because it was like with all the tiebreakers they ended up having to go to a coin toss for conference champion and they lost the coin toss and didn't get in as an at-large bid, which that does suck. But at the same time, like, like your conference—if your conference sucks, like even if you did, like if that is how you missed, missed out. Like if your conference is bad, that doesn't necessarily mean it's like yeah, like because I mean it's like okay, yeah. Let's say you—they're like okay, yeah, it sucks. You lost because of a coin toss. Then they put them in instead of the Grizz, and Southeastern Missouri beats them by like sixty points. Then that just that just looks embarrassing at that point. And it's like they did say like Delaware was kind of a bubble team and like Montana and Delaware just got in because of legacy because they're all, they're both always in. But it was like, if you look at games where the Grizz were full strength, because like, and I mean, even the game against the Cats, like Lucas Johnson was coming off of an injury. And it's like, but it's like either way, it's like we got, yeah, we got blown out by that, but it's the number four seed. And they probably should be three because North Dakota got the three seed just like that was a legacy thing. They should probably be like the five or six at best. That's what we got to go to next. It's a good thing I don't talk to anybody in North Dakota anymore. Because there was this fat douchebag that I worked with that was like, the reason they don't go up to BCS is because the BCS is scared of them. And, like, we dominate the BCS every time we play them. And it's like, it's this dude that's like, he probably weighs as much as this Jeep. Like, in not like in, like, muscle. Like, all fat. And he's out of shape. He's never played a sport in his life. But sat would sit there and, like... People that know him now, like, I mean, still know him, like, he would rant about NDSU and, like, I just, like, he was saying something about them on, or no, he's, like, something talking about, like, Wentz being the greatest, going to be one of the greatest quarterbacks in the NFL, and it's, like, the Eagles needed him to get hurt and stop playing to win a Super Bowl. I mean, they needed an illegal formation that didn't get called, too. And it's, like, Trey Lance, like, he had to get hurt for the Niners to start doing good. Like, 
Wentz had to get benched for the Redskins to start doing good. Now that he's there, it's like, there's nothing that, like, NDSU was just like, that's all that stupid state has to live for. And that's what I told I'm like, you dumb, fat idiot that's never actually played a sport, like, shut up about them. Like, until one of them actually does something great, like, and it's, like, the Grizz got invited up to BCS when they, like, they were in, in the championship, like, four times in seven years and won two of them, and we got invited up. You're trying to say you've won nine out of the last 11 or whatever it is, and they're not going to invite you up, supposedly? And I just, like, you know, told him the truth, and then he, like, unfriended me, and it's like, God, because he he would have been talking shit the second the Grizz won. Like, oh, we're going to come here and get blown out. And it's like, yeah, well, you play in Fargo. You could have a huge environment advantage, but your pussies and playing a dome. Like, little crybabies. Like, there's nothing good about NDSU at all. Except, like, they, they decide to choose to be a big fish in a small pond. That's the only thing that makes them special. Is it's like, oh, yeah, let's stay, stay and beat up on the little guys. When you could be like Boise State, when they went up, and then they dominated and stayed undefeated. And, like... Like, if the, if the playoff would have been a thing then, they would have got a playoff berth. I mean, and, like, they were going into bowl games, like, when it was like, oh, hey, like, they went undefeated, they're not getting a championship berth. And they lit up Oklahoma, who was, like, the three or four in the country that, like, barely missed the championship game. And they blew them out of the building. Like, you know, maybe that's what NDSU could do if they had some balls. But, no, they just want to sit there and, like, oh, let's stay. Let's say the big fish in the small pond. Like, I mean, James Madison just got invited up. They haven't done – oh, boy, they, like – they won one championship or whatever. Like, they're meh. Like, they're like, they're like, or I guess they're in like the good category, but they're at the very, very, very bottom of it. And it's just like, but yeah, like people like him would be talking so much shit already. And it's just like, it's like, yeah, you, yeah. You're the team that chooses to be a big fish in a small pond and you're pussies and playing a dome. Like, congratulations. Good for you. But yeah, but like back to the main point though, is it's like with mo like, I kind of felt bad because it's like, you know, because they're SEMO and then it's like a team we'll never really see again unless we happen to play in the playoffs again probably. And it's not like one of the rivalry things. And it's like with that thing with Lemu Jones, it's like, oh, they they don't deserve a seed. Like, of course. And then they're on top of that, they're already a rival. And like they, I think they beat us that year, but it was like, yeah, but then we come and like we lit up the number three team in the country. Like a little while after that, so it's like right before the playoffs are picked, and like when we, it wasn't like we were like a two or three seed; it was like a seven or an eight. So you know, it was like we should we redeemed the loss, and then like it was a close game on the road too. So, but yeah, it's just like it's just kind of interesting though, because like to that team that like lost because of a coin toss, like. Like, yeah, that guy that's like, oh, yeah, like, we could get more diversity in the tournament if they didn't just put these legacy teams in. But it's like, I mean, every single team that, like, yeah, if the Grizz would have blown the game, like, in the beginning of the year to, like, Indiana State or whatever it was that they won by, like, 50, sure. But all four of the teams that beat them, two of them are in the top four seeds, and then the other two are in the tournament. Like, like it's just, I mean, I don't know. I guess every sport show, because it's like Stephen A. Smith. If, he, if it wasn't for his ridiculous screeching about how bad he hates the Cowboys, he probably wouldn't even be on TV anymore. And, like, Skip Bayless, if it wasn't for his crazy ranting about how good the Cowboys are, he wouldn't be on TV. Same with Michael Irving. Like, if there's not people, like, being, like, over the top and or contradictory, they wouldn't even be on TV. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one.